Hi everyone, I'm Ikehime and welcome to my channel. So right off the bat, I'm going to apologize for the lighting. The lighting in my office is very terrible and I hope that at some point I can change that. Um, but yeah, it's really bad. I'm sorry. Please just bear with me on that. Um, I also am recording with a webcam, so I'm sorry that it's slanted and the colors probably don't look as good on the camera as they did in real life. But I did my best and I'm working with the materials I have and perhaps at some point I'll have like a Patreon goal reward as like a better lighting and camera system for recording these types of videos, but um, we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been working with fantasy themes lately. I've always been really into fantasy and I've also been doing some watercolors these past few days and watercolor has been really fun and it's just a free experience, you know, it's just kind of um, very relaxing. I've always loved watercolor for that because I find that when I do watercolor, I'm not I'm not worried about the outcome of it. I'm just worried about having fun, you know? Um, so yeah, um, I wanted to do a fairy this time because I haven't drawn a lot of fairies. I used to draw fairies a lot when I was a kid, um, but I kind of stopped drawing fairies, especially when I got more into anime and stuff. So I really want to go back to my roots and draw more fantasy because I really like fantasy. And I also have a convention coming up and it's a sci-fi convention and I'm not very good at sci-fi stuff unless it's fan art. So I really wanted to kind of mess with more fantasy stuff. So hopefully the people at the sci-fi convention will like more fantasy. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm like, I'm using a Sakura Koi uh, watercolor set, 18 colors, so I don't have a lot of colors to work with, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I do the best with what I have. At some point, I would love to get more watercolors because I really love watercolor and I think they're fun to mess with and I really want more colors, but for right now, this will do. So as you can see, I'm using like a lot of um, variety in my colors, so I'm already off to the bat. I'm using like yellows and greens and kind of bluish greens and even blues in parts. Um, I used a lot of the blue in the background as kind of like um, an atmospheric shield to kind of give distance to the trees and bushes in the background. Um, I didn't put a lot of detail to them, I just kind of did like basic detail uh, because, you know, I don't really need to go in depth because they're in the distance. So yeah, so a lot of that is kind of like very light and blue and that's just kind of how I like to portray distance and atmosphere. Um, and a lot of the upper close Oh my goodness, the up close leaves I did more detailed so that you could actually like see the um, relation to the um, the very background and then the near background. So yeah, and I decided to do mushrooms because what fairy piece is complete without mushrooms, right? <laughs> um, I'm not um, <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of mushrooms these are. They're just kind of made up fantasy mushrooms. I didn't look up references. I just kind of went off of um, how I've kind of always drawn mushrooms and the way I draw mushrooms is kind of like loosely based off of real mushrooms with like a fantasy twist because I didn't want to look up references so I just drew whatever mushroom kind of came to mind and you know basically as long as they look like mushrooms and people can tell what they are then I did my job. Um, so yeah, uh, I wanted to draw her sitting on a mushroom because I think that's always really cute and I wanted to draw her interacting with nature so I wanted to draw her with a bug. So I did. I picked a bumblebee. Um, I was originally going to do like a butterfly but I find butterflies are kind of boring. <laughs> um, like they're really pretty but like you know everyone just kind of likes butterflies and you know I don't know. I didn't really want to do a butterfly. I find you know it's just kind of the plane. <laughs> so I decided to do a bumblebee and bumblebees are actually my favorite bug so um, that was a lot of fun. I did have to look up a reference so even though I looked up a reference I know the bumblebee is not drawn perfectly. I did my best but um, yeah I had to look up a reference for it and I I had a hard time because the bee that I wanted to draw is like I wanted to draw a bumblebee but here we have carpenter bees and sometimes we mistake the carpenter bees for bumblebees and like if you're up close and you're looking at a carpenter bee you can kind of tell but carpenter bees have kind of like that really cute fluffy yellow like jacket on them and bumblebees are fluffy all over so I was really confused and trying to find the right reference for kind of a while but I did find one for the bumblebee so that's good. Um, so yeah and when I was painting the bumblebee I didn't really know how it would go because I use a red color erase prismacolor for my uh, initial sketch. So 
I actually have the outline of the bumblebee <laughs> on there, but I was painting over it and I didn't think about it until I was painting, but I was using yellow and I didn't really know how well the yellow would actually cover the red. Um, cause even though watercolor paint usually does a good job at coloring the color, the cover, the, bleh, the color erase, oh my god, I can't talk. Even though it's good at coloring the color erase, <laughs> um, I wasn't sure cause it's yellow and yellow is usually like a less pigmented color. Um, but I think it did a pretty good uh, job and I did my best to make the bumblebee look fluffy because they're so cute and fluffy and for the wings um, I really wanted to kind of emphasize that they were uh, like a bit um, translucent like um, Bumblebee wings aren't really transparent um, They're actually more kind of like a gray brown. So I was trying to do my best to emphasize um, that um, I tried to make them look like wings as best as I could. I'm not very good at drawing wings, but I did try. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, for the skin color, um, the Koi watercolor set, I only have 18 colors, so it's actually kind of limiting, you know. As I said, I don't really have a lot of colors to work with. And I used to spend a lot of time mixing colors together to try and get like that perfect tone, and I used a lot of white, but I found that, you know, white really didn't do anything. It just kind of made the colors more opaque. And I used to ink my watercolors before I painted them, and the paint would just kind of cover the watercolors and last time I tried to record a watercolor painting I totally ruined it so oh, I'm trying not to go back to that so yeah um, I just kind of stopped using white and I stopped mixing colors really and I just kind of used the colors as is and just used water to dilate to dilute them um, and that seemed to be working pretty okay for the most part um, as for her dress I really wanted to make that connected to nature too I didn't want to do it just like a cloth um, dress so I decided to do flower petals. I don't know what kind of flower petals. I really just wanted them to be more whimsical so I knew that I wanted them to be pink so I did <laughs> I did like pink but I wanted more variation because she's sitting on a red mushroom so I used um, yellow as the base to highlight around the edges and I used the red to kind of make a pink ink wash over it and then I shaded with um, purples and blues to give it more variety and dimension. So yeah, that was fun. And I also wanted to add shape to her dress, so I gave her um, a vine, like a little green vine belt, which you'll see in a second. Um, yeah, so it was kind of uh, it was kind of fun messing with the colors on this. I really like messing with colors as much as I can, and watercolor is so forgiving. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier, and it takes all the stress out of like trying to work on stuff. So yeah. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, if you notice, I'm using like one brush for the entirety of this piece. And I actually really do enjoy this brush. It has such a fine point and like a broad body that you can make thin strokes and broad strokes. And it's just really convenient. It's kind of like the all-in-one. Um, but it's also like the only watercolor brush I have. <laughs> I have brush pens. I don't use them so much um, anymore because they're so small and they're really only good for detailing and a lot of the stuff I do I have backgrounds so I like to add um, a lot of watercolor at a time so I mostly just use like one brush for convenience but yeah so that's why I'm only using one brush um, for her hair I knew I wanted it to be blonde I really wanted it to be very very light so um, I thought the blonde was kind of boring, you know, I didn't want to do a straight blonde, so I decided to do a more like kind of a strawberry blonde. Um, so it's not super strawberry, but there's a little pinkish hue to it. Uh, I used yellow paint with um, like a red stained water to kind of spread the color around. So yeah, that's what I did. Now we get to the outlining part. I'm using Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils. And I'm using colors that are related to the thing that I'm outlining. Um, I probably could have used like a yellow or something or like a peach color to outline the mushrooms, but I thought the red would look okay. And um, going back, I might have done it differently, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter because, you know, it's just outlining. And what's important is the overall piece rather than, you know, that outline that's going around it. So yeah. Um, for the leaves, I put on the details on the leaves. I'm also not good at that. I've looked up references for leaves in the past and I'm still not good at it, but I did my best. Um, oh, sorry, it froze. Uh, I had some technical difficulties at that part. I apologize. Um, so yeah, I did my best on that. 
Um, I am sharpening the, po the pencils um, to as fine of a point as I can get because the thicker the pencil, the more of an outline you're going to have, and I really want a thin outline. But that's kind of difficult with um, the Premier pencils. I don't know why they just don't sharpen to that point so well. Um, also some of mine are very old, so they've been through hell and some of them have kind of, um, the crayon part has probably broken in the pencil, so it makes sharpening a huge pain and it's really frustrating and um, at some point I'm, I will have to get more pencils. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do the best with what I have because I don't use color pencils so much, so it's kind of like a lot of money to um, invest in something that I'm not sure I'm going to use a lot of. But yeah, they're nice to have, so I definitely recommend getting them. Um, so yeah, I tried the way I pick colors is I tried to pick the colors that were like relating to what I was outlining, um, that but that would give it enough contrast to kind of um, you'd be able to tell it was outlined. Um, as for the wings, I noticed like bumblebees have like more brown wings, so um, I kind of used a brown pencil and I tried to kind of shade around it and outline it that way. And I am so terrible at bug wings. Oh my gosh, I am sorry. I really did my best to try and look up references and make them look. Um, more realistic. Um, I'm not sure that they do, but I did try because I wanted them to look less cartoony. Um, as for her wings, I wanted them to be more opalescent, so I used a darker peach for the outline and a very light peach for the veins in the wings. Um, I think they came out kind of nice, so I'm, I'm fairly pleased with them, with my limited knowledge of doing wings. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, uh, this is probably the point where I'm getting Oh, no, that was the part where I had to think about what I was doing and I had to pause the video actually because I was trying to find uh, the thing that I hadn't outlined and it was her hair. So yeah, her hair didn't come out exactly as I was hoping because the prism color is kind of thick for her hair. Um, but I did the best that I could. I sharpened it to as fine a point as I could get. So you know, what you get is what you get. Um, I used a black pen to outline her eyes and stuff. Um, I'm always a fan of black. I could have done brown, but I didn't really have like a brown pen or something that I could use very easily, so I just used black. Um, as you can see here, oh, I'm sorry, that was the point where my webcam fell. I apologize. Um, but yeah, so here I'm going over with some chalk pastels. They're very new to me. I don't really know anything about chalk pastels, but I have a whole set of them and I'm trying to figure them out because I think they make a really nice accent to pieces. So um, <laughs> as soon as I figure out how to do that, we'll be really good. Um, so yeah, a lot of this, I'm trying to apply it with a brush and it's not working super well. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so doing the wings, a lot of the wings it took kind of uh, a while to do. And you can see I go back and forth between the brush and my finger because I'm trying so hard not to use my finger because I don't like using my finger on my art. Um, but yeah, it was really the only way to get the stuff done faster, otherwise I would have been there all night. And who wants to be putting pastels down all night long? Okay, so now we get to the finishing touches, the fun part, and it's the white highlights. I'm using a Jelly Roll ink. Uh, or a Jelly Roll gel pen to put on the highlights. And here I'm using a felt tip Faber Castell um, white pen. Um, I like both of these pens, but the Faber Castell one is definitely less pigmented. Um, so it works very well for subtle highlights, which is a lot of what I used it for. And I also put the white spots on the mushrooms because who likes to, um, who doesn't like white spots on mushrooms? <laughs> They're fantasy mushrooms, so who cares? Um, so yeah, I thought it would be really fun and cute. So that's what I did. And we're almost at the end of this video. Oh my goodness, it went so fast. Um, as always, like and subscribe um, and leave your comments. I love hearing from you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!